Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Amazon's Attack number 5. Let's take a look at the creative team before we get into this book. This book is written by Josie Campbell with art by Vasco Georgiev. Alex Gumara is on colors, letters by Becca Carey. Uh, this is part 5 of the current storyline. In this book, we have Peacemaker and Mary Marvel featured uh, disturbing the peace in this issue Queen Nubia and her sister find themselves in the crosshairs of one of DC's deadliest hired killers, the Peacemaker. Elsewhere, Mary, Mary Marvel finds herself asking an unlikely ally for help in clearing the names of all the Amazons, but can anyone be trusted in this game of lies? Um, so yeah, as I've mentioned in previous reviews, uh, this is a great book to read. If you're enjoying what's going on in the world of the Wonder Woman series, uh, you definitely want to also pay attention here because we see how the rest of the world is being affected, how the rest of the Amazons, uh, how the rest of the Wonder Woman family is being affected in this book. That's kind of what the story goes. Uh, it's really fun to have Peacemaker in this one. I think he's such a departure from the TV show, but in such a good way. Like he's just a righteous asshole that's just a... Uh, a bad guy. Um, and, you know, I think Josie Campbell has been really building this story. I feel like we're going to get a really nice payoff in the next issue. Uh, but with this efficient storytelling, the beautiful art, by, we'll, go, we'll go into that in a minute, and just featuring and being able to capture the voices of all these characters, I think that's what's making this run just really amazing to follow on a monthly basis. So, Let's take a look at the preview art here. Uh, as we have done it with the past few issues, uh, the first page or the first few pages give us a little bit of an insight, a little bit of exposition into the world, right? How are the Amazons being perceived by the media, by society? Uh, we even have these like podcasters there, but also just regular people. Uh, and I think that's really the heart of the book, or the heart of the matter, what the book is trying to get at. Uh, and then we have these really interesting team-ups, right? Uh, we see Yara with Wonder Girl and Mary Marvel's also there. Uh, but <clears throat> things don't always turn out how they're supposed to. I think Vasco is really good at... I love these pa the pacing of this page as they're falling. Uh, it really captures the tension and, and just everything, how it's building up as they fall down to the floor. Uh, and then moving on, just really fun... Uh, points of view here making you have to make peacemaker feel like a threat and you know having this this low angle uh and then also having him stick out of the panels like all those little choices make him feel uh and then of course the parallels to hercules with really the story of the amazons if you're aware of that um which is you know that's from uh the Wonder Woman mythos, and it's really important and really interesting that it's being intertwined here uh, to really give you the tone that they're going for, right? Comparing Peacemaker uh, to somebody like Hercules uh, when it comes to the Amazons and, and how they are in confrontation with one another. Uh, yeah, this book continues to be fantastic. We are left probably at the lowest point for the Amazons that I've seen in a while. Uh, things are not looking good for really anyone on the team. Uh, but if there's anyone that can pull through, uh, I know it's going to be them. So how will this play out? Will they all be able to work together? Because we see that they've been affected by this magic that's going on around. Uh, and then, you know, how will Peacemaker fare out of this? Is this connected to the larger things that uh, Amanda Waller is doing with the Suicide Squad? We'll find all that out probably next issue. Uh, so very exciting stuff. Really cool covers at the end of the video. Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a preview for Batman, The Brave and the Bold. Now, I have read a couple of stories in this, but I haven't read everything. Um, so let's talk about this book. We'll talk about the creative behind these stories, uh, and then we'll get into some preview art. Uh, so... This is the uh, anthology book that we follow along. Uh, some of the stories continue throughout multiple issues. The reason I'm doing a preview for this one is because this actually kicks off a few things uh, that I found pretty interesting. Uh, so let's talk about that. 
Uh, let's get into the creative team here uh, so before we get into any of this stuff. Uh, so we have the first story, Batman Mother's Day Part 1. This is written by Carl Kirsch, uh, with art also by Carl Kirsch. Colors by Masasig and Steve Wan on letters. Uh, this is the Gotham Academy story. Uh, so it looks like Gotham Academy is back in session in this part one of three-part story. Uh, guest starring Maps Misaguchi and Tristan Gray. Uh, in this story, Kirk Langstrom, formerly the Man Bat, now clean from his serum, uh, is teaching at Gotham Academy. But Man Bat is menacing the city. Has Dr. Langstrom fallen off the wagon or is there a deeper, far more sinister plan afoot? Uh, now let's talk about. Let's go back and take a look at the second story. This is Artemis, Poison Within, uh, written by Delilah Dawson. Um, but Delilah Dawson, sorry, <laughs> Serge Acuna and George Combatis on art, uh, Matt Herms on colors and letters by Dave Sharp. Uh, this story will feature Artemis uh, as she takes uh, as she goes on a tale of rip roaring adventure. Uh, so that should be pretty interesting to figure out. We also have the Nameless story. This is by Matt Harding with Mike Henderson and Art Adam Wazowski in colors and Troy Paterio in letters. Next up, we have Lois Lane, The Game, a prologue uh, written by Torn Grumbeck with art by Tom Derenick, Lilo Ridge in colors, letters by Dave Sharp. This is a conspiracy that only Lois Lane can solve. Uh, and last but not least, we have Batman the Cheeseburger by Dan Waters with art by Ricardo Lopez Ortiz, letters by Troy Pateri. This is the black and white tale that is featured in every one of these issues. So at the end of every issue of these, we have a black and white tale. So very exciting stuff. Now let's take a look at some of the preview art for the first story, the one at Gotham Academy, which I'm very glad to see another story in Gotham Academy. Uh, I really enjoy that series, and I hope that DC can kind of revisit it in a little spurs like this. I think it's really fun to always check in on that world. So here you can see a few pages. Uh, we kind of get to see a little bit of the setup. This is all happening one year prior, of course, uh, as Bruce drops off the little one at the Academy. Uh, now, you, if you're not familiar with Olive, like I said, go read Gotham Academy. I think it's a really fun book. Uh, and then we also fast forward to now where the mystery is afoot. afoot we see that the man bat has once again attacked in Gotham. Uh, so really interesting stuff. Uh, this book also has some really amazing covers at the end of the book. So at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that and let me know which one you picked up. They're all kind of themed after uh, each of the stories. Uh, and we even have a really cool cover by Kelly Jones. So that's really fun. Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Astonishing Times, Rise of the Koken, issue number two. This is a new book from Comixology Originals. Uh, let's take a look at the creative team before we get into this book. This book is written by Frank J. Barbary and Eris Quinones, uh, with art by Rory Coleman, letters, uh, sorry, color by Andrew Kramer, and letters by Taylor Esposito. Um, this is a con a spinoff of the Astonishing Times book that you may have read in the past. If you haven't read that, make sure to go check it out. You can read it on Comixology or Kindle Unlimited, whatever the service is called now. Or you can pick up the trade um, from Dark Horse. Uh, so in this issue, as I mentioned, spinning out of the pages of the smash hit series, Astonishing Times, the, the rise of Koken tells the story of Koken, the mysterious cybernetic samurai which, as I mentioned in issue number one, uh, was one of my favorite characters from the series. In this issue, witness Koken's arrival in Japan and pivotal moments that come to define his life in this thrilling second chapter. Uh, this chapter really escalated from the first one. I think the first one did a really good job setting up the world that we were seeing. Uh, but, man, things really ramp up here. Uh, I think that, and we'll see some of the art, but... Rory Coleman and the art team just 
really manage to capture and make make Japan look really cool uh, in this world. Like their version of Japan looks really cool in this series. Uh, just full of neon lights and just everything that a big city like that should be when especially when it comes to like a story like this that's full of adventure and action uh, and maybe even a little romance so um i like that Koken's very brash and still not the the person that we know who he is uh but we're also learning that tragedy can strike at any time and maybe these are some of the things some of the things that are happening here uh affect and and help him become the character that we know he is uh, let's take a look at some of the preview art. As I mentioned, just really big bombastic action. Great, uh, great use of the neon lights here. I love this. The, like I said, I love the aesthetic. I love the look of the city. Um, it just, I really, I really enjoy it. I think the dialogue, especially between Koken and his mentor, uh, is really interesting. They, it feels like they're setting up a few things that I'm really, really on board with. We also get to explore a little bit of the uh, Japan underworld, if you will, uh, and how maybe the there's a little bit of um, animosity between the ranks, uh, right? Uh, now, we know that Koken is obviously a part cybernetic. He embraces technology, and that's kind of the theme, one of the themes that is going on in this story, in this chapter. Um, so, yeah. I quite enjoy this one. I'm really excited to see what happens next. As I mentioned, Koken is one of my favorite characters from this series. Uh, so I'm really happy to kind of follow him along in these adventures and, and meet the people that shaped the character that we know from the main series from the original series. Uh, so if you have read this, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Duke number three, this is a new book from the Energon universe over at Image Skybound. Let's take a look at the creative team before we get into the book. Uh, this book is written by Joshua Williamson with art by Tom Riley, Jordi Belair on colors, letters by Rose Wooten, and plenty of fantastic covers. You'll see some at the end of the video. Stay tuned for that. So in this issue, Duke's search for answers has led him to a classified holding side, a.k.a. the pit. Uh, for America's most dangerous prisoners. Now, he's the most wanted man in the world. Unfortunately, everyone seems to prefer him dead over alive. Uh, yeah, really fun stuff. As you saw, and there was a big thing at the last issue. You can probably tell from the cover here. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit of Baroness stuff. So, uh, But before we get into that, they introduce a lot of characters that I'm not very familiar. So if you are a big G.I. Joe fan, I need you to let me know down in the comments. What's up with this major butt, dude? A uh, major blood, sorry, blood, B-L-U-D-D. Uh, you'll see a picture in a minute when we look talk about the art. Uh, but yeah, Joshua Williamson is giving us like little bits of the G.I. Joe world um, while still making sure that we remember everything is in this larger Enidron universe, right? I think it's really fun to kind of see, uh, especially the parallels between the Duke and the Cobra Commander series while... While things are quickly escalating uh, for for Duke, I think Cobra Commander keeps diving deeper and deeper. So it's really interesting to see how those series that I feel like are kind of parallel to this world, uh, how they how they contrast. Uh, all that combined with Tom Riley's magnificent art, uh, the color palette that Jordi Belair brings to these books, like you'll see when we talk about some of the uh, some of the preview art. But man, is it is an excellent team that has been assembled here. Uh, so let's take a look at some of that preview art, as I was mentioning. So the first thing, here's Major Blood. Uh, as I was saying, like, I, I don't know this person. Based on the helmet, I can tell he's kind of Cobra Commander-ish, maybe. Definitely a bad guy, because, I mean, look at that stash. Uh, look at the size of that gun. Unnecessary. And also, who drinks 
you're not supposed to hold wine like that because your heat, your your hands will warm up the wine. But I wanted to put these pages together because you can see the contrast in the tone of the coloring by Jordi Belair, right? We have these really bright, warm tones here in Major Blood. And then because uh, because Duke and his pals are over in the, the pit, like you can see the the cool shade of this blue tint all over the place. Um, yeah, just the body language that Tom Riley uses uh, for each of the characters, I think, tells you a lot. And then Joshua Williamson and, you know, Tom Riley have put together just a great way to give you a little bit of exposition. Who is the Baroness? Why is the Baroness there? Like, just all that stuff that you need to know. So, really interesting stuff. Another quick quick touch and i wanted to this is it's not really a spoiler but i just want to make sure that you know if you haven't read the book maybe uh you can come back and read this or you can come back and see this later like the energon universe and the transformers continue to haunt uh you know all his experience there continues to haunt duke and that is kind of like the driving force of the story right so really great that i feel like uh the team kind of continues to Bring that up and make sure that we're informed. Uh, doing the same with the Cobra Commander series. So if you haven't read the Cobra Commander number two issue, make sure to go check it out. And also at the end of the issue, you can see uh, a letter that I sent in into the team. So uh, yeah, make sure to send letters into the, the publishers. I'm sure the creators love them uh, and they might even get printed in the back of the book. So. Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Hack Slash Back to School number three. This is a new book from Image Comics. Let's take a look at the creative team. So we have story and art by Zoe Thorgood with color assist by Sarah Matriash. Uh, Hack Slash, of course, originally created by Tim Silly and Stefano Caselli with the main cover by Zoe Thorgood and cover B by Luana Vecchio. So Pretty big fan of both of these artists, actually. So I might end up picking up both of uh, of these um, these these covers. So in this issue, Cassie and the agency discover a dangerous slasher responsible for making kids murder their own families after spending too long online. Cassie assumes it's brainwashing, but which she must be immune to, right? Only stupid people get brainwashed. Uh, let me tell you something. This adventure got out of control very very quickly uh, you know i'm used to i'm used to seeing and expecting a lot of really interesting shenanigans from the crew here uh but boy things escalated quickly probably one of the gnarliest issues with some of the most uh intense art that i've seen uh from thurgood in a little while uh, and and you know i think she sometimes shares a lot of this stuff online previews and, and you know as she's working on stuff but man once you see everything in context once you see everything come together with the colors and the dialogue and everything that it really really adds to the story just that it puts it on a different level uh like the art is it's already magnificent but one of the other things that i really enjoy is that this book is pretty funny and goofy as hell uh which i I have never read the original hack slash, so I don't know if that was a part of the the you know a part of this franchise. Uh, but if it is, I need to go check it out because man, this book is goofy. The characters in it are so silly sometimes, uh, and then you know, and they just they feel very very much like characters that uh, of course know they have to do they have to do this work that they're doing. Uh, but they're going to have a good time doing it if they can. So uh, let's talk about the art for a second here. Let's take a look at some preview. And as I mentioned here, you know, things, the tone of the book kind of is all over the place and in the best of ways. Uh, we see the little kids online, you know, like this little kid is in a trance. Uh, and then, you know, we see the, the girls hanging out, uh, taking some downtime in between missions. And boy, things get really weird and <laughs> pretty gross really fast uh we also see cassie as you know her character's been developing ever since um since we met her at the beginning of this book and i think she's been acclimating herself to the academy and to the people around her so it's really interesting how she's kind of playing all that out uh and of course i love the references here i mean i am a big anime fan i am a big fan of naruto and just having one of the characters 
be wearing a headband uh, and yelling out Baka. Like, come on. This is like fan service 101, and it's the best ways of fan service, I think. Uh, so, yeah, this book was quite enjoyable. I really, really dug it. I can't wait to see what happens in what I believe is the last issue next next time around. Um, I hope that this is not the end of the series. I think there's a lot more stories to tell here. Um, and I think, and hopefully, Zoe Thurgood will definitely keep writing more stuff like this. So, yeah, really, really enjoy this. So, if... Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 117. This continues the Darkest Hours event, uh, and I'm very excited to talk about it. Look at this cool cover. Uh, let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. This book is written by Melissa Flores with uh, illustrations by Mona Diangenefislis. Apologies for that if I mispronounce that name. And Marco Rena. Uh, colors by Roland Gulo with assist by Jose Enrique Fernandez and letters by Dukeshire, uh, cover by Torin Clark. Uh, we also have some really neat covers at the end of the video. Um, so this book just got really weird and complicated, right? I think the first issue was so disconnected from everything because it was setting up this whole darkest hours thing. That when I got into this one, I was like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, luckily, the team really kind of slow plays things for you. Like, even though it throws out a lot of things at you, it tries to reconcile everything. And in the end, it really, like the way the book ends and wraps things up for this chapter, um, it really makes it very easy to kind of follow the, the through line after that. So uh, in this book... Things are desperate on Earth as Mistress Vile attacks with rangers from different universes and civilians alike teaming up to keep the carnage at bay. But some special objects may be the key to keeping the planet safe, even if it won't last long, as Billy and the Hyperforce rangers rush to repair the Master Arc. They're only able to pull a single ally from the heart of the Morphin Grid as the dark, dark Spectre's powers grow. So yeah, so this Dark Spectre and its forces are kind of going all over the place. Um, but we have a lot of interesting things and revelations here. So let's go take a look at some of the preview art. I just never seen characters like these in some of the Power Rangers stuff that I've experienced. So it's really neat to visit different universes. Uh, you do get enough explanation of why those places are important. Uh, I think the relationship here between these villains, it it completely starts to deteriorate immediately. Uh, and you can kind of see, like, you know, you can, you're can just waiting for the other shoe to drop. So that's pretty clever. I love the the lettering on this, actually. I You know, whenever a villain has uh, red letters with a, when an inverted palette, color palette or something like that, it just tells you how evil they truly are. And it makes it sound cool in your head, I think. Whenever I read red text... Is definitely a lot different. Now I will say, sometimes red text is hard to read physically, so I'm glad I'm reading this digitally through the the review copies. Uh, and then we get to see some of the rangers that we're a little bit more familiar with. Not everyone, but really interesting to kind of catch up with the uh, Hyperforce rangers as well. Uh, and then just to see like familiar faces, uh, you know, uh, all throughout scattered. Whether it's a uh, <clears throat> whether it's a bit of an Easter egg or somebody that's kind of coming up to the forefront of the story. So yeah, I think this is pretty exciting. Uh, I do feel like this is, uh, it has a little bit of a higher level of entry, this event. Uh, and it can be a little confusing at times, but if you just kind of go with the vibes and let that be the, you, what you enjoy about this book, I think you'll be all right. So if you have read this, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching everyone. Remember to share, like subscribe, Hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.